So Bone Lab released this week, and if you've been living under a rock, it's the sequel to the immensely popular and extremely important VR game that is Boneworks. This addresses the main critical position of Boneworks being that it was PC exclusive. I agree that it being PC exclusive did hinder the game's reach, however Stress Level Zero has rectified this issue, bringing a full sequel to both PC and Quest, whilst fully supporting both independently of each other with separate SDKs for modding, which allows the community to create two versions of mods as to not create gimped experiences on PC or overly laggy additions for the Quest. This is a balance that can be hard to achieve, especially while having an identical product on both platforms. You see, unlike other games, Bone Lab Quest is Bone Lab. It's not Bone Lab Nomad and it's not Bone Lab Shack. It's not any of the other PC VR spin offs, which provide the core functionality but fall short of being a true one to one port of the PC equivalent. This wasn't an easy task to do either. Stress Level Zero got a complete product based on a historically a PC VR engine working on a mid range Android phone that's taped to your face. Why y'all keep on saying the iPhone better than Android? Bone Lab has full ragdoll, player physics, momentum, and time slowdown. I fully expected the quality of said features to be subpar when compared to the PC counterpart. It's really refreshing to see a development team not favour one over the other, as it really annoys me when the PC version is limited in updates or graphical quality, or when the Quest version is broken or non-existent. Up until now, I thought that was the case of smaller developers not having the time or resources to do this. However, Stress Level Zero has proved this wrong. If one indie game studio is able to step up to the challenge, then I believe a lot more should be able to afford it as well. Enough with the introductions, let's get on with the video. I titled this video, Bone Lab, the best game to come to Quest. As recently, unless you were born in the 90s, the Quest has become kind of dormant. Ghostbusters game here, Resident Evil 4 port last year, a piss old GTA game port in the works. Nothing for the primary demographic of Quest 2 users, which, if you like it or not, are the dopamine dependent, Fortnite dancing, Josh Dub viewing children. Like it or not, you gotta to appeal to what brings in the bucks. Imagine if I started doing Tim Winton literature reading and analytical essays on my channel. Now don't get me wrong, there's nothing at all wrong with having these older games ported, but if that's all we get, feels a bit samey to those of us who don't care for those titles, and it sells VR as a pixelated Nintendo 64 of a console to the younger audience who don't understand why some people think these titles are significant. I mean, let's let's face it, if someone put out Pong when Wii Sports was released, which one would you play? I know I'm not alone with this opinion, as Boneworks is the newest title on the MetaQuest store and is already one of the top selling of all time. <laughs> Boneworks on PC is touted as one of the most important games for VR as a whole. There are a plethora of video essays just echoing this fact that it is one of the most important PC VR games, with points made that it is more of an engine or a gold standard of guidelines as to how a VR game should be built on. Boneworks has become a poster boy of the VR world, despite not having the backing of Valve's Half-Life Alex or Facebook, sorry, Meta's Beat Saber. I mean no fail to stress level zero when I say this, but before Boneworks our entire gameography was consisted of way smaller and less open ended games. Boneworks was their first venture into a game of this caliber. Boneworks has an impressive show don't tell story style, which received criticism for being too hard to understand. To which I say fuck off, if you were waltzing around a simulation stumbling across things you wouldn't explain everything as if you had some mouth breathing spectator inside your fucking head. Aside from its great story and underdog success, it bought the first real Gmod VR equivalent. There are thousands of mods for Boneworks and the modding community is actively supported by Stress Level Zero. The physics within the game are very Gmod-esque while still fitting in with VR. Ragdogs are malleable, your hands collide with walls and objects, the vast majority of objects you can pick up all with a simulated weight. This does give the game a slightly clunky feeling to new VR players who may be used to the helium filled guns of Pavlov or the glass made enemies in Superhut. However once you spend more than a couple of hours playing, it all becomes a no brainer. No shit it's going to be slower and harder to lift and throw a desk than to throw a coffee mug or radio. These are things that all also exist in the real world. And once you get over that initial hurdle, it brings in a whole nother world of immersion. Stress Level Zero clearly knew they had a winner with the formula of Boneworks, and instead of writing everything for the few numbskulls that can't grasp physics or story nuances, they elected to expand on their base, which they call the One Marrow Interactive Engine, and create Bone Lab. As I haven't finished the mainline story yet, and the game is still in its infancy, 
I want everyone to be able to play through the story unspoiled. As such, there are only minor spoilers for the first hour or so of the game. Basically, if you haven't reached the Bone Lab hub, skip to the timestamp on screen now. The game starts off rather abruptly, letting you live through the life of a YouTuber whose video ranked 9 out of 10 in the YouTube Studio app. Afterwards, you're left running around some caverns and such before stumbling into a more modern office building type space. This almost instantaneous switch between a medieval level filled with lanterns, clubs, and the modern and sterile office environment fill the player with confusion and wonder. These feelings are naturally played into as you progress through this earlier level, seeing bits and pieces of your medieval past world cementing the fact that the world you lived in was an entirely fabricated reality. Uh, just like the one in real life, ha 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 ha. As you progress into the elevator to attempt to progress, it falls, landing you in the Bone Lab hub. This acts as a diegetic introduction to not only the start menu and customization screens, but also the mods. As previously mentioned, I'm not going to go through any more of the story, but I am going to talk about my future speculations as to how Bone Lab will play out. First, I'm going to get one thing out of the way. I fully expect there to be more quest mods than PC mods. It's a larger platform after all, why would someone who's making something for fun rigorously test two versions of their mod? Especially with PC parts being insanely expensive nowadays. I don't think the quality of mods will suffer, and I believe the vast majority of mods will be on both platforms, but I do expect a few player models and meme items to maybe miss their PC version. That being said, the developers have already confirmed that they're going to continue supporting the game going forward, with updates like they have been with Boneworks. This means we'll most likely get quality of life improvements for the Quest Pro and leaked Quest 3, which is where I believe the game will really shine. I hope you have enjoyed this look into Bone Lab, and if you want to see more content by me, hit that subscribe button. Because, well, motivation's a bitch, and I need to see positive numbers, please. This balance can be hard to... This is a balance that can be hard to achieve, especially whilst having an identical product. You see, this wasn't an easy... Enough with the in... Enough with the introductions. Let's go on of... Enough with the intro... Which, if you like it or not, are the dopamine-dependent Fortnite dancing Josh Tub... Imagine if I started doing Tim Winton literature We Fuck, why can't I not say two words at once? Like it or not, you've got to appeal to what brings in the bucks. Imagine if I started doing Tim Winton <laughs> Why can't I say that bitch ass's name? I'm gonna switch it to a different author in a minute. Boneworks has become a poster boy of the VR P These emotions are naturally played into a As previously mentioned, this acts as a diegetic interact.